Hey guys, it's Dan from Tor Overland again. And you may have watched my video from a few weeks ago where I talked about EVs and converting classic defenders. Now something which I'm quite interested in, and I was fortunate enough to have a behind the scenes day with Barnaby and the team Electric Car Converts. Now they're based down in the southeast of the UK and they specialize in converting classic defenders to EVs. And on one of our Devon Day Tours, as you may have seen in our previous video that I put together, then one of the guests who came had his Defender 90 converted by these guys. So it was really interesting to get an insight into what actually goes on, what's in the technology, and how they approach that type of build and how modular it is. So without further ado, I'll sort of leave it to Barnaby here to explain what goes on behind the scenes. So to talk through the Land Rover system um, that we've developed over the last four years, we've basically, starting at the very front, we've got radiators now some people think oh electric cars don't need radiators um, but actually they do we've got a big one here for the motor a secondary one down for the battery pack that's not because the battery gets to 90 100 degrees like your diesel does but that's to keep everything at the same temperature inside here and to assist when you're fast charging um, so everything is ready here all the coolant tubes are ready to go and you can see where lines will plumb from there into the, the coolant tubes on the side of the battery pack there other things you lose when you lose an engine are power steering, aircon, and a brake vacuum. So that's what these three things in the front are to power them with voltage rather than with a spinning belt, for example. Um, the main event, Felton 55 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, now that's good to get a lightweight Land Rover 150 miles, heavyweight Land Rover more like 110, 120. Um, or you can actually double that up and under the seats add another 55 kilowatt hours, which gets this up to, you know, you could do 300 miles of range if you drove it gently um, and weren't doing motorway speeds. So that's batteries for you. Obviously everything is plugged in and all the high voltage is already made. All of the looms are completely done. You don't have to make anything, do any crimps, work out any lengths. We know how it works. We've now done 50 cars. Um, so we really know exactly how it works. So we don't need to put things in your hands. Coming further back, you've got the Tesla Model 3 motor. Now that's sitting in the middle of the vehicle where the transfer box and gearbox used to be. And all in this one unit here, which is about 70 kilos, you've got 250, 300 horsepower motor, which is that section. You've got the gearbox, which is this section, the inverter here, and then out to the differential, which is a dual output to the rear diff and the front diff. So you're still maintaining constant four wheel drive. Uh, so that's the motor. These are doing 0 to 60 in sort of five, six seconds now. Um, so far better than the TD5 that used to be in, in the car over there. Also in here, you've got new clocks. Obviously, we've got to show amps and battery level rather than what engine temperature. I think is the only thing that we could really see on these old cars. Um, but other than that, this section is, doesn't really have anything inside. The big major bit at the back here is the change to the charge socket. So a charge socket there instead of the fuel filler in the same place where it all used to be, obviously pre-wired, plugged in, completely ready to go. So that when a kit like this can be, can be built on this chassis, we can put it straight into a crate, ship it over the world, and then somebody can install this in. We call it four or five days if it's your first time. We're gonna try and do it in one today, um, but that's because we've done it 50 times. Um, so we kind of know what we're doing, but um, stay tuned and let's see how we get on with that. You heard Barnaby right. They're looking to convert a Defender 90 to EV within a day. They have the vehicle prepped with the old engine, gearbox and transfer case removed. Naturally, there's at least a day's work in doing this for most people. They're starting by stripping the components they had neatly installed on that shiny galvanized chassis, with the aim to swap these into the ready and waiting Defender. The main battery pack gets installed where the engine used to be, and as Barnaby mentioned earlier, you can choose to have an additional battery pack that goes into the back of the vehicle, although in this particular install, they're not doing that. As you'll see, there are a number of folks dotted around with their cameras out. I was joined by fellow content creators, which still feels a little weird to give myself that kind of label. But I was joined by Chris and Nick of Hazelnuts, Jerome of Outrun and Angela Murasan. They all focus on EV tech and I find a lot of their content pretty interesting myself. So I'd recommend having a little look.
After four hours, they got the install to the point that a test drive was needed. Some seriously impressive going by the team of electric car converts. And now guess what? A test drive. So in I hop with Barnaby. Right, so this isn't usually what a Land Rover sounds like or feels like. But um, in just four hours, she's gone from an empty car to a fully electric car. So this is how she can accelerate now. Ready? Now I can tell you that is not normal in a Land Rover Defender. This thing is from like the late 90s, early 2000s. So to do 0 60 in six seconds is just unheard of. Um, even the Corvette engine cars are struggling to do that. So let's go for a little spin. I'm completely off the throttle pedal now, so that's regen. So slowing down the car, but actually putting power back into the battery bank, bank which is quite an interesting, uh, I guess, positive of doing an EV conversion. It's not gonna use up your brake pads all the time. But you see, this car is just designed for country roads like this, for off-roading, for going around the farm, etc. where it's just easy to drive. Usually by now, I'd have changed gear eight times, but there's just no need in these. Thanks again to Barnaby for showing me around. And I just find that type of thing really fascinating, just seeing how things work, no matter what it is going into a vehicle. I think one thing I really love about this whole this whole space really in talking of Land Rovers, not just EV, is whatever it is, it's a great excuse to just keep these great vehicles alive. So I think I'd like to start with that point that even if you're not a massive fan of electric, the fact that it's another viable option for some people and it just keeps Land Rovers on the road. I mean, I'd much rather be driving past a beautiful old series or Defender than some of these just nondescript, I don't know, white goods vehicles that we have. I'm guilty, I have one. We have an electric car, which is just a new Volkswagen. Nothing to write home about, but it does a great job of getting us from A to B. But so what? That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in Land Rovers specifically here and keeping them on the road. So what are my take homes from this whole process and what did I think? I thought it was deceptively simple, how it was. And I know it's not because it's not something that anyone could readily go and do on their, on their own in their garage without some level of training because you're dealing with high voltage, which is deadly if you're not careful. So that is a difference to just working on a conventional engine and doing it at home. But there are people who do do their own build. But I guess this is the space for these companies like in this instance, electric converts or electric car converts. And I do love the simplicity of the electric drivetrain. So, you know, I'd liken it to, well, I don't even have to liken it to, it is very much like your remote control car <laughs> that you have as a kid. You have the battery and you have an electric motor and the electric motor inherently is very simple. So when you compare that to a combustion engine, everything is so much simpler. Uh, there's far less moving parts. So with it, it is a more reliable power system, I would say. And you know, that's kind of born out of my experience of living with an electric car as well. Compared to a combustion engine, there's a lot less to go wrong. The caveat there is converting your cars to electric is a lot more expensive. So if you wanted to go and convert your Defender from a TDI to a TD5, or you wanted to put a V8 into it, there'll be varying levels of cost, but I know it will be a fair chunk cheaper than converting it to electric. So then the question is, who is going to convert their cars to electric and why would you? So I think, yeah, going back to my original points of keeping Land Rovers on the road, I do think this is a viable option to keep your Land Rover on the road. Also got to remember that most people buy and own their Defenders and it's not just a car which you hang on to six months and then sell on. Most people I know who own these vehicles have either had them for a long time or plan on keeping them for a long time. So if you're going to invest in it, having it as an electric vehicle that you can use, I think there's a massive amount of merit for that. And I think at that point, the cost is finding that cash in the first place, isn't it? But the cost becomes less, less of a thing the longer that you keep the vehicle. So that's one point there. 
The other one is, what do we use our Land Rovers for? And again, I think this comes down to most people I know who have these vehicles, they're not their primary vehicle, taking them from A to B. They are their second, their third, their toy. And when you have that kind of use case, things like range anxiety, so can I get so far or so many hundred miles without needing to charge or, or those types of questions are less relevant because most people are using them to just poop around as a bit of fun. So in that instance, electric, really good. I think it's stating the, the obvious here, but if you want to be using your Land Rover for long tours and big overlanding adventures, is electric the powertrain for you at the moment? No, I, I can't really see, and I, well, I can't hand on heart say that it would be. And again, it just comes down to infrastructure there. I think if you wanted to go on a big Euro road trip, absolutely you can make that work. You'd have to make some adjustments to your itinerary and some of your planning, but you, you definitely could make it work. If you wanted to go on an African adventure or going to some far flung or far flung sort of place in Asia, then no, it, you know, very obviously is not going to work. Not really. It's going to be huge amounts of compromise and uh, yeah, I just don't see that being feasible right now. So you'd be wanting to stick with your combustion engine. But coming back to what we use our Land Rovers for, the people who use them for that type of trip are very much in the minority. So EV, yeah, that's, you know, sort of, I think a very good option, certainly one to consider. Another question you can ask, and this goes back to an older video that I did around driver engagement. So what are electric cars like to drive and do they offer that same level of driver engagement? So for those who haven't driven an electric, the power delivery is very linear, very smooth, and they're very easy to drive. So as a means of getting you from A to B, they are an excellent drivetrain. They're great for that, but you don't have any gear changes. You don't have any turbo or whooshes or supercharger whines and you don't have an exhaust note so some of those types of things and when you're going into the territory of having a vehicle which is more of a toy those things start becoming a bit more important for most people I would say so in terms of a driver engagement it, it does depend it does depend what you want from your drive if you're looking for a manual and really feeling that you're connected to something mechanical, electric isn't going to quite fit for you. But if we want to compare it to, say, my Disco 4, which is an automatic, I really like the TDV6, which is in that. It's a, you know, sort of the way it delivers its power, lots of torque, but an electric motor would do that and some. So that's something where the driver engagement there, you know, they're, they're pretty equal. And if anything, in some ways, the electric drivetrain may be better but I don't know it's all things we're sort of a walking contradiction aren't we so on the one hand I would love an old defender with the TDI and manual and you're just really sort of driving it like a, the agricultural vehicle that it is but really enjoying it for that but on the flip side I would love to have an electrically converted one which can whiz around in and that would become a little easier to live with in many ways it's just an interesting, an interesting conversation, and I think it's something which I'm hoping I'm coming to in an unbiased way. I'm just genuinely interested. I'm not in one camp or the other. I'm a petrol head at heart. I love vehicles. I love cars. I love engines. I love the sounds. But with that, it's not limited to just a petrol engine or a diesel engine. I love the idea and the concepts and technology behind the electric as well. It all feeds into that wider car and vehicle community, things which I'm really interested in. Well, as always, guys, I am so thankful for you watching these videos and me waffle on about these type of things. I hope you do find it interesting because what I'm trying to be doing is just seek out those opportunities to share things which most people don't get a chance to have a look at or learn about. And with this particular video as well, I would be fascinated to hear from those of you who are seriously considering converting their Land Rovers to electric or perhaps already have. I think it would be really interesting to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much again. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me continue making this type of content, something I'm really enjoying. 
And until the next one, cheers, guys.